Redditors who have had major health issues. What small symptom should you have looked into earlier? Get your dang eyes checked. Doesn't matter if you have 20 stroke 20 vision. Or think you do. You should get a yearly checkup from an optometrist. I have never had a problem with my vision. And just last week my wife made an appointment with the optometrist for the both of us. Well it turns out I do have 20 stroke 20 vision and good peripheral vision. For now. But the optometrist also discovered I have a rare disease. Pigment dispersion syndrome. Most often found in people between 20-40 years old. A clear indication of this is Krukenberg spindles on the cornea. Where pigment from your iris sloughs off and floats freely in the aqueous humor. It can get lodged in the drainage system of your eye thus causing increased interocular pressure. When this happens it's called pigment glaucoma and can lead to permanent blindness. So despite otherwise good eyesight I have a possibility of going blind at a pretty young age. There are no signs of open angle increased interocular pressure. The kind caused by pigment glaucoma. And the damage is permanent. Get your dang eyes checked. Not me. But my mother never went to the doctor. I'm not really sure why but she would just refuse to go no matter what. She didn't often get sick so it was usually just something we let slide. One day she was particularly sick. She seemed like she had a pretty bad fever. But she still refused to go to the doctor. Eventually we gave up convincing her to go. But we told her that if she was not better the next day we would make her go. She agreed to that. I remembered being awake most of the night playing PC games and hearing my mother mumbling to herself in her sleep. My bedroom was right next to my parents room. Texting my sister about it. And agreeing that no matter what our mother would go to the doctor the next morning. Unfortunately she never made it through the night. Apparently she had undiagnosed diabetes and died of heart problems related to that. It really hurts knowing that something as simple as getting a regular checkup could have prevented this from happening. Had an irritable bowel and one day found a speck of blood on the toilet paper. Doctor said it was probably nothing but get a colonoscopy just in case. Nine months later my colonoscopy is ready, almost didn't go as I didn't see any blood after the initial time. They removed 80 odd polyps from my bowel. A couple more years and the chance I would have had bowel cancer was like 80%. If I didn't get that colonoscopy I would have had bowel cancer by now. I was 28, I'm 31 now. So now I get 10-15 taken out every 12 months for the rest of my life yay. I get blood every time on the TP. Doc says it's from fishes but every time I see someone talk about their terrible illness in the first clue was TP blood I worry. I had severe back pain as a 9 year old child. I would come home crying from softball practice my parents forced me to go to and they never believed me about the back pain. They thought I was making it up to try and get out of practice. When they finally did take me to the doctor, bam, it was scoliosis and too late for a brace. I just had my fourth back surgery three weeks ago where I had to have an entire disc replaced. I am 21. Listen to your kids, people. Listen to your kids, people. Seriously, when I was in first grade I walked around for three weeks complaining about my arm. They thought I was trying to get out of school but when summer vacation started and I continued to complain I went to the hospital. Turns out I was walking around with a broken arm that whole time. I just had frequent headaches and crazy itching skin. All the time for about 8 months. The itchy skin was worse than the headaches. Never comfortable and I always thought bugs were biting me. I even had an exterminator check my entire house. One particular day I had a really bad headache and went to urgent care. I was 24 at the time so when they said that my blood pressure was 240 stroke 140 I really didn't get the severity of it. They send me for stress tests etc a month or so later. I did all that. But what they failed to do at the hospital that day was to take blood out of me. I went for my follow up a month later where they did take urine and blood work. I had state 5 kidney disease and needed dialysis as soon as possible since my numbers were so bad I was close to dying. Check your blood pressure and get blood work done regularly. Finally one I can answer. I've always had very heavy, very painful, and sometimes very erratic periods. In June of 2017 I started to get very small pains in my lower left abdomen. But only when menstruating. I just chalked it up to weird period pains. By October the pain was constant. But not too bad. I went to a gyno. She assured me it was just PCOS. Oh. Okay. Cool. 
Come December I was still on my period. From the 28th of October. By February the pain in my side was so bad I could barely bend over. And definitely couldn't put any pressure on that side. I was in pain so bad 24 stroke 7. That at work I could barely walk. Still on my period. From October. I'm thinking. Wow. That must be a huge cyst. Finally cave and go to a different Juno. She almost yells at me for waiting so long. Does a biopsy of my uterine lining. Bam. Cancer. Grade 3. Stage IV endometrial cancer. That pain was the cancerous mass inside my ovary that had grown so big it was pushing into my colon and intestines. Now I'm about 5 weeks out from surgery and getting ready for my second of 6 rounds of chemo. Ladies, listen to your vagina. Especially ladies with heavy painful cycles. If it seems new or even slightly different get checked out, please. Wasn't really small as I kept getting infections. Turns out my eye deficiency had turned into also having an egg deficiency. Now I have to have infusions every 3 weeks to give me the antibodies my body no longer makes. So a big thank you to everyone who donates blood as it's your antibodies I am given. Feeling faint after climbing stairs walking up a steep hill is not a sign you are unfit 24 year old. For me it was an indicator that I was running on just a third of a tank of red blood cells. Which in the end was an indicator that I had cancer. Cancer can get you at any age, even the ones generally not seen in young people. Looking at UGI lyomyosarcoma, 8 years later, still here, frick cancer. Thanks for scaring me. Anything that doesn't go away and is persistent, if it's small but regular headaches that seem like nothing but come often, a rash that isn't annoying but doesn't go away, anything that just kinda hangs around. I was 28 years old when I was diagnosed with stage 2 Hodgkin's lymphoma. For about a year before my diagnosis, I had a number of symptoms which were too small to be a big deal on their own, but collectively they were. It started with a little bit of an itch, here and there, nothing out of the ordinary, just an annoying itch I'd get either on my arms or legs. Then it started to become more frequent and more intense, it felt like I was itchy under my skin, it was stinging. Burning and the more I scratched, the worse it got. What was strange about it too was that it would start and stop at the same time every day after work, in the evenings. After a few months of this itch getting worse and worse, I knew something was up. I knew there was something wrong with me, but I wouldn't have in a million years imagined that my itch meant cancer. It wasn't until my husband found a grape sized lump above my collarbone that we knew something was seriously wrong. 4 months of chemotherapy later, I was in remission. It's been 2 years. Since then we've traveled all over the country, had a baby and learned that life is too wonderful to take for granted. I had upper GI problems. I felt full after eating a few bites. I had belching and upset stomachs all the time after eating. I kept going to doctors but they kept recommending diet changes. No diet changes helped. But eventually the rectal bleeding started and I was diagnosed with rectal cancer. I wish it had been caught 3 years ago when the symptoms started. Another get your eyes check response. I started getting headaches, blurred vision, keyhole vision, and weird sounds in my head. Went to get a routine eye exam done, and they sent me to a neuro-ophthalmologist. Did an MRI. They thought I had a brain tumor. Turns out I have idiopathic intracranial hypertension and papilledema. So, basically, a kink in a ventricle in my brain, which leads to high pressure behind my eyes. Could have gone blind within a few months. I was 21. Fast forward to now. 5 years later, and I'm totally fine. I get a MRV scan each year, and take notice of any signs. Haven't had any issues since I started taking meds. Get. Your. Eyes. Checked. For 2 years over 20 doctors told me was impossible that the very localized, severe pain deep inside my spine was anything other than childhood trauma and stress from my job manifesting into pain and I needed to meditate and crap. I was too young for such pain. It came out of the blue while I was a 26 year old in excellent shape. Plus, expect more disbelief when you have complaints of pain if you are female. That pain turned out to be an aggressive tumor growing inside a vertebrae that nearly killed me. I had life saving surgery in Europe but because I was misdiagnosed for so long I'm now in agonizing pain and disabled. I had to fight for tests, treatment, etc. And this was with excellent insurance. 
I just looked too good on the outside, even when I'd be weeping and unable to stand up. Yet then, when I'd show emotion from the pain I was deemed some weepy, dramatic junkie wanting to try drugs and attention. Got sore feet walking that just felt like I pulled a muscle. After a few weeks I started going to a doctor and tried tests, blood tests, x-rays, cat scans, for gout and arthritis and after months of no clear results and eventually being better than I got leg pain that prompted me to head to the hospital. Ultrasound found a blood clot from below my knee to my middle thigh. After being put on blood thinning meds I was able to walk again and now a few months since the diagnosis the DVT is clearing and I seem to be back to normal. Was a fun year from start to finish. February 2008. I was walking across the street to the grocery store and apparently blacked out. One minute I was fine. All of a sudden the pavement was inches from my face. I gasped. Had just enough time to throw up my hands. Sprained my wrist. Banged my legs pretty good. Injured my back. I don't remember tripping. I don't remember falling. Just taking a step then. Boom. Pavement. I rolled over on my back and crawled to the curb. It was 10 o'clock at night. The street was empty. I sat there for a couple of minutes before I could try standing up. I went to the doctor for the injuries and he didn't check me for blacking out. A few weeks later, I woke up and could not stand up. It felt like my back was broken. I had gone to bed fine the night before. Woke up to the worst back pain I've ever experienced. My brain was telling me that I could feel the broken bits of spine grinding against each other. Which of course was impossible. Back to the dock. He ordered a full range of rays, mris, etc. My spine was closing in and crushing my spinal cord. It's called spinal stenosis. Usually age related. But I was 38 at the time. I normally listen to my body but my doctors kept saying that my symptoms were anything other than what I told them. I was injured by a birth control device and despite having it removed with a hysterectomy, I am left with long term medical issues. Painful. Debilitating. Periods with heavy bleeding. Migraines. Exhaustion. Insomnia. Painful sex. Pain all over my body. All things I've never really had issues with. Doctors kept blaming it on everything but the device and I couldn't get them to listen to me. I knew it was the device. I gave up and tried to commit suicide after my marriage fell apart. I spent a few days in a coma in the IQ and was sent to an inpatient treatment. After being released, I saw a Facebook page about the device. Joined and learned that all of my symptoms were typical with the device. Including it ripping open my fallopian tube and migrating. After 8 years, I was finally able to get a doctor to listen to me because the device is now a huge controversy. I can't get my family or the years I lost back. The lymph nodes in my neck swelled up to 8x their usual size within the course of about 10 minutes, one night. I'm not completely unreasonable, so of course I went to my doctor about it. He didn't seem too alarmed, and got me to get an ultrasound done, which revealed nothing. The next step was to get a CT scan, which I put on the back burner for over a year, because my doctor was adamant that it's probably nothing. I went to the ER after experiencing some intense burning sensations where the lumps still were. Got a CT scan done during my stay at the hospital, followed by a biopsy of one of my lymph nodes. Turned out to be Hodgkin's lymphoma. My last session of chemo is in less than a fortnight. If your doc says it's probably nothing, get a second opinion. Folks, lumps don't just come out of nowhere for no reason. In hindsight, I was a freaking idiot for not going for the CT scan when it was first brought up, and my doctor was a freaking idiot for making it seem like an absolute waste of time. Small cut that hurt more than I thought it should have after a few days turned out to be necrotizing fasciitis, flesh eating disease. My wife had a cough that wouldn't go away, then high pulse a month or two later. Those two were joined by a pain in her hip a month later. Turns out she was at stage IV lymphoma. Cough was caused by chemicals released by liver tumors activating the cough reflex. She had 6 months of chemo and a year later we think it might be coming back. Tests going on at the moment. I always seem to be daydreaming according to my mother. We found out in my late 20s that I was actually epileptic and suffering absence seizures. I honestly think I have those. Some days I have up to 30 of those zoning out phases where I completely forget what happened. Mum, who's actually a nurse, 
thinks it's just me daydreaming. Also have episodes of completely forgetting where I am and tbh it's scary all around. I'm under 18 so I can do much but hope mum wants to get it checked out eventually. Well, I actually did get it looked into early but it didn't get taken seriously for years. I was spotting, mildly bleeding, after sex, spotting between periods, just generally spotting on and off randomly. For the first 3 years it was blamed on teenage hormones. Then I was given pregnancy and STD tests despite not being sexually active yet. At 18 years old after multiple negative pregnancy tests and STD tests, they finally took a pap smear and found precancerous cells stage 1. Then the doctor scheduled a follow up and a biopsy by the time the biopsy results come back it had progressed to stage 3. If it went any longer I would have had full blown cervical cancer. For the hypochondriacs out there this is super rare. Most women don't get precancerous cells until they are in their 40s. Most who do, have their immune systems deal with it and wipe out the cells within 2 years. Of those who don't, it usually takes years to progress anyway. I was too young and scared of doctors to ask more questions back then, so I have no idea why mine was so aggressive. But I'm so so lucky they caught it when they did. My treatment was simple because they did catch it before the next stage of progression they just burned it all off. Didn't even need chemo or anesthetic. Get your pap smear ladies. A little discomfort for an awkward problem. And I was barely out of high school. <laughs> Chronic foot pain is not normal. After enduring it for nearly two decades, I went to an orthopedist, who determined that I had not one but three benign tumors compressing nerves in my left foot. Three surgeries later and my life's very different. <laughs> I've been prone to nosebleeds my entire life. It's just something that happens at intermediary stages between drastic weather changes, like when spring turns to winter. At some point, the change in air moisture causes my nose to bleed. Or when temperatures would change rapidly, like if there was a sudden spike from 90 degrees to 94 degrees, I lived in Southern California. I've become accustomed to it. The thing about nosebleeds is that they can also cause headaches. So I was used to those before and a little after the nosebleed. But at some point, I noticed they began coming before the nosebleed. I didn't think much of it, because it was only a few seconds before. The pain was a little sharper than the usual headaches. Then it went from a few seconds before, to a minute or two before the nosebleed. The pain became sharper. At one point, I was trying to explain to my mom what was happening, and my speech became very slurred. She thought nothing of it, and told me we couldn't afford a doctor's visit since she and I didn't have health insurance at the time. I took myself to the hospital anyway. They ran some tests, found out I had an aneurysm that was on the brink of rupturing, and the blood vessel in my brain was ballooning and putting pressure on other vessels near my nasal cavity that was causing them to break and bleed. This was actually relieving some of the pressure, and keeping me alive. They put me on blood thinners and told me I pretty much had a 50 stroke 50 chance of living. Either the blood thinners did their job and the vessel would stop ballooning and go back to normal, or it would break randomly and I would bleed out onto my brain and most likely die. Aneurysms are a silent killer. The doctors luckily didn't charge me for the tests once I told them I didn't have insurance. They only charged me for the meds. So I walked away with a relatively small bill that I was able to pay off within a week. Luckily I've always been good at saving money. After some follow ups, I was given a clear, and told that I need to keep taking blood thinners for the rest of my life for the vessel could swell again. I take an aspirin every morning and afternoon, and so far it has been enough to keep it from happening again. I've always wondered how many people in the US die because of being too scared of the cost. Not me, but my partner. When she was in middle school, she got her period, as most girls of that age do, except, there was far more blood than any normal cycle, heavy flow or not. She went to the doctor to check it out and they dismissed it as just another period. Turns out, it was an ovarian torsion and the ovary had become necrotic and she was bleeding out. She had to get a nephorectomy. It never occurred to me that such a thing could happen and she's come to doubt a lot of rural doctors. I had the same feeling towards doctors after being misdiagnosed and dismissed as nothing. It's important to know your own body, because doctors are just people and they are going off what they've seen in the past. The sciatica, pain in my leg, which at the time I thought was just a trapped nerve. Nope, 
It was a spinal disc bulging out from between my L5 and S1 vertebrae, which eventually ruptured totally one day leading immediately to the most indescribable agony I've ever experienced and years of debilitating pain, trouble and surgery. Don't ignore lower back pain people, and see a real doctor about it, not a freaking chiropractor. I have a herniated disc between C6 and C7, and that mother rupturing is one of my worst nightmares. I have a, sorta, good news story. I had a lump pop up on the jawline just below my right ear. I went to a head and neck surgeon and he thought it was Warfin's tumor. A fine needle biopsy was inconclusive but consistent with Warfin's tumor so that was his diagnosis. I did my research and over time I began to realize that my symptoms were not consistent with Warfin's tumor and asked him to refer me for a second opinion. He sent me to Cleveland Clinic where I saw one of the top head and neck surgeons in the world. Back when decent insurance wasn't out of reach for an average Joe. He agreed with my concerns and set me up for almost immediate surgery. As luck would have it another one of the top head and neck surgeons in the world was visiting and assisted. My right parotid gland had a carcinoma on it and they removed it in a 5 hour surgery. Because it was a glandular tumor it grew slowly enough that it was caught before it could metastasize and I was able to avoid radiation and chemo. 7 years later I'm still cancer free. So the lesson is be aggressive about understanding your condition and getting the treatment that you believe you require. Don't be afraid to tell the doc about your concerns and participate in your treatment. It saved my life. 2. Both times, I had pain beyond what was normal. Both times, while I did seek help, I was basically dismissed and I didn't push back. Self-advocacy is important. Folks, first, semester long kidney infection. I had actually gone in a few times because I would get sharp, to the point of doubling up, pain when I sneezed or coughed. They suspected ovarian torsion, and when that was ruled out, through martyrin at me I didn't argue, although I did keep getting follow ups. It was right at finals time when I went in again, and they caught a high BP, pulse, and fever at the workup. I was rushed over to the aware tridge found all my stats back to normal, and, a few days of hospitalization. One horrible nurse that increased my risk of mortality, three missed finals, one incomplete course, and a 3x swollen kidney later. I was discharged and managed to limp through my remaining files with leftover pain. Second, systemic organ failure, which, fun fact, feels a lot like a bad kidney infection, was on treatment for another kidney infection. I still felt absolutely horrid and went back to the air. Nothing showed any infection, nothing looked out of place. So they sent me home and said, it'll take a few days for you to feel better, be patient. I spent the next two days getting worse, so I made a non-emergent appointment at the clinic. Ended up passing out in the waiting room. I vaguely recall waking up in the air to an uncomfortable med student assigned to babysit me. Them rushing to flush stop another antibiotic I was reacting to. Some sort of argument between internal med and infectious disease. Poor docs were super excited and hopeful that I had something cool their faces lit up like kids on Christmas morning when we discussed the possibility of hand tavirus. And finally waking up in the hospital room. Hospital turns out I developed an allergy to a common antibiotic my liver function was nil. They had to wear masks and were about to institute gowns because my white count was nil. And some other vital things were just giving up. Man, Americans deserve universal healthcare. From reading these posts. It seems like many lives would be saved if people didn't have to worry about the cost of visiting the doctor, tests, etc. It would probably be cheaper too because of earlier detection. Sad for my American friends. For years, my doctors insisted that the small mass attached to my ovary must be a benign cyst. You're too young for cancer. You don't have a family history of cancer. Although I'm adopted so I told them I don't actually know my family history. This past August, I had intense abdominal pain and no additional symptoms. No gas or intestinal issues. No fever. Just pain that came in waves so intense that I involuntarily wept. The cyst had ruptured and spilled over a liter of blood into my abdomen. Necessitating a full emergency room surgery. A week later, pathology came back and I have stage 3 ovarian cancer at age 33. You can imagine how infuriated I was when I learned that there are actually blood tests that could have been performed which sometimes can help diagnose ovarian cancer. Had we known it was cancerous, 
We could have removed it before the mass ruptured and it would have been confined. Now, it has spread throughout my abdominal cavity. I had to have chemo, and I run a high risk of recurrence for the rest of my life. Demand blood tests. Do research and ask specific questions. I trusted my doctor and never considered the idea that they were leaving out important information. Losing or gaining weight rapidly. Don't be thrilled because you're all of a sudden losing weight. It's not normal. For me. Q diabetes. I started to become inexplicably exhausted all the time. Heavy limbs. Trouble focusing. A lot of asthma. Act. All the time. Eventually I had to quit my job. Couldn't even do a part time job. I couldn't make dinner or clean the house. I was having doctor's visits. A ton of blood drawn. My husband was frustrated but worried. I had been the breadwinner. Eventually we had to move. Apartment raised prices like crazy. The first day in the new apartment we take over some boxes. I was so exhausted I begged to just let us unpack some blankets and sleep on the floor. We made a big nest on the bedroom floor and slept there. In the morning I was full of energy. My husband kept looking at me and commenting on how much energy I had. We went back to our old apartment and I was exhausted again within minutes. It became clear something in the apartment was making me sick. Moving truck comes and we empty the apartment. As large pieces start moving we start finding it. Black mold. It was also in the vents of the apartment. Tons of it blowing around. A few weeks in the new apartment and I was perfectly fine. Mold is no joke. When you have the same issue come up over and over again and keep having to get it treated, make sure the doctor knows how often it has happened. I was frequently getting kidney infections, and every time I'd go, the doctor would say this sometimes happens but luckily is easily treatable. I didn't realize that sometimes equals often until I mentioned getting them since I was an infant to a doctor who stopped, paused, and said, I think there's something wrong with your kidneys. Got sick with the flu or some virus. A couple of weeks later started having tingling in my mouth and hands. It kept progressing until I could barely walk. Finally got diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome. I was lucky and mine was not super fast progressing and did get treatment before it got to the point where I was paralyzed or couldn't breath. Tingly body parts are no joke. Go to the doctor ASAP and fight that something is not right with you. Let's put it this way, if you ever have a dramatic occurrence of symptoms put of nowhere get checked out, things like, headaches, pain, anxiety depression, dizziness, inability to focus, odd bumps or markings that appear, etc. Basically if something happens for no reason, there is a reason. Not exactly a major health issue, but when I was about 14, I had a sore spot next to my tailbone, nothing major. It kind of felt like a pimple. Over the years, I noticed it sometimes hurt to do sit-ups, but not too bad. When I was about 23, it started hurting like heck to the point I finally went to the doctor. Turns out I had a pilonidal cyst that for whatever reason decided to go super inflamed that week. I had surgery to have it cut out and spent a few days on my stomach high and playing Skyrim. The docs told me that it had just started forming ducks and if I had waited another week, I would have been down for longer than a couple days recovering. Now for the major one. Since I was a kid, my hands have always shook, nothing major, just like tremors. I never thought anything of it and my folks were very much no bone observed, no doctor necessary. This last year while getting a physical, the nurse told me that she heard something weird with my heart. I went to the doctor and it turns out I've got a bicuspid valve with aortic regurgitation that is concerning to them. According to my new cardiologist, I've probably had it since I was young and there's no way the military should have let me join as loud as it is. So now I've got a cardiologist and yearly checkups with the promise that, eventually, likely the next few years, they are going to need to replace stuff. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.